Hi everyone. So today's topic is going to be a bit broad, much more interesting and needless to say, full of information. Yes, I'm talking about the grand, the humongous and the vast Delhi Sultanate, which existed in the history of India. Now, I don't know why. I mean, I'm shocked how people assume Delhi Sultanate to be a single entity. But no, this is not true. See, a lot of individual dynasties existed under Delhi Sultanate, which spanned from 1210 to 1526 AD. And you know what? This topic is extremely important. No matter which exams you sit for, you just can't ignore this topic. Because this topic is very important from any examination point of view. So let us not waste any time and let us start. And before anything else, I would very briefly give you the timeline of Delhi Sultanate so that it becomes clear which ruler or which empire came after which. So begin, beginning with the Delhi Sultanate had five major empires under it which were the slave dynasty which was also called by the name of Mamluk or Ilbari dynasty. Now this dynasty was called as slave dynasty because you know a tradition that a tradition of the slave was the you know very popular legacy of that time. As we see that when uh, Muhammad Ghori was ruling, he made Kutubuddin Aibak as his slave. Further, Iltutmish was made the slave of Kutubuddin Aibak. Balban was the slave of Iltutmish. So this legacy was, you know, going on. Henceforth, this era has been named as the slave or the Mamluk dynasty. Mamluk means... Mm, you know, Mamluk generally refers to the servant class. Now, the Khalji dynasty, very important. The Tughlaq dynasty, the Sayyid dynasty and the Lodi dynasty. So, these are the five dynasties which came under Delhi Sultanate. For today, we will just know about the slave dynasty and rest four of the dynasties will come in separate parts and separate videos. And this timeline was very necessary to not confuse while we move further with this topic. Now, first we will learn about slave dynasty which existed from 1206 to 1290 AD. Now, slave dynasty was also known as Ilbari or Mamluk dynasty and spanned from 1206 to 1290 AD as stated earlier. So, very first, if you remember, I told you all about the Kutubuddin Aibak. He was a slave of Muhammad Ghori. And when Ghori moved to Afghanistan, he left everything over Aibak. And after the death of Muhammad Ghori, Aibak became the Sultan of India and laid the foundation of slave dynasty. So after having known about the successors of slave dynasty, let us first know about the Kutub let us first know about Kutubuddin Aibak. I mean, who was he, how was his administrative policies, what did he introduce, what did he construct and all such information. Now, Kutubuddin Aibak laid the foundation of slave dynasty. He was, you know, very generous. He was very kind by nature and hence people used to call him Lark Baksh. I mean, the giver of lakhs. He used to donate very wholeheartedly and he was very generous in attitude. So people, you know, used to address him as Lal Baksh. He is also known for constructing two mosques, namely Khovatul Islam, which is in Delhi, and Arhai Dinkaj Hopra, which is in Najmer. I mean, you know, this is sounding very uncanny, but uh, yeah, he constructed a mosque named Arhai Dinkaj Hopra, which is in Najmer. He even began the construction of Qutub Mina. Now, a lot of people confuse this as Qutubuddin Aibak constructed Qutub Minar. No, he began the construction, but it was finished by Il Tutmish, which we will see in the further slide. 
and it is also said that he destroyed many temples and built mosques now since we know aibak as a person of generous nature he was also very cruel but his inclination towards muslims or his inclination to uh, you know uh you know uh make the muslim community develop he did all sorts of work he destroyed many temples and built mosques with the material of the temple he died in 1210 while playing polo and was buried in lahore so he lost his life while playing polo and was buried in lahore after the death of qutubuddin aibak iltutmish the slave and the son in law of aibak came to throne so let us first know something about iltutmish now his full name was samshuddin iltutmish and he ruled from 1210 to 1236 ad he was the slave of qutubuddin aibak and also the son in law as he was married to aibak's daughter now initially he was just a slave of aibak but later on when aibak got impressed by him he got his ma- daughter married to iltutmish so he in a way was also his son in law now he ascended the throne of delhi in 1211 after defeating aram baksh at that time delhi was facing a very serious crisis so when iltutmish came to throne everything was not easy for him he was not given a bed full of roses he had to face uh, real hard challenges and at that time delhi was uh, going through a very serious crisis he made delhi the capital instead of lahore so he made delhi the capital of his empire instead of lahore now he was very sensible and strong person he protected delhi sultanate from the devastation of chengiz khan now chengiz khan was a a uh, mongolian king uh, you know there is a great detail about the mongol invasion which i'm not going to discuss in detail over here because otherwise the video will get very lengthy and uh, and uh, this is you know this is not a question and answer session so it would be it would be better if i give you the short background of it so you know iltutmish was very strong and he was very sensible person he he protected delhi from the devastation of chengiz khan uh, and chengiz khan had come in search of somebody i do not remember the name right now so uh this was bit about mongolian and if you wish you can go and elaborate the mongolian invasion now iltutmish introduced rikta system ikta system now i had also you know raised this uh, topic or this word in my initial video which was gupta period but i did not explain there what ikta system was so today in case if you do not know about ikta system i'll basically tell you what it was so what used to happen was the land property of any kingdom was divided into several small tracts of land called ikhta now any soldier or officers who would help the king they would get lands instead of salary so basically ikhta system was a type of land grant hope this is clear now iltutmish also introduced two types of coins which were silver coin copper coin silver coin was known by the name of tanka and copper coin was name, known by the name of jital so he finished the construction of qutub minar which was left halfway by qutubuddin aibak i have said this initially that qutubuddin aibak constructed uh, i mean started the construction of qutub minar but it was finished by iltutmish who was his slave now he formed an official nobility of slaves known as turkani chalgani or chalisa they were 14 numbers now you need to remember all these names otherwise this will become very difficult to you know if you happen to frame any answer it will be very difficult if you do not remember all these names and you cannot have any explanation over all these topics you just you can't help but remember all the names now iltutmish died in 1236 and because his son was not capable of ascending to the throne he gave the power to razia sultan his daughter now 
you know you all must be noticing that i'm not describing the details of the territorial expansion of any leader why because they cannot be sur suppressed into shorter paragraphs and nothing much is to ex uh, to be explained regarding the expansion policies of rulers you know you just need to learn them nothing else anyways so al tutmish died in 1236 and he ascended the and uh, his son was not capable or he was inefficient to ascend to the throne so he gave the power to his daughter who, uh, who was razia sultan now this was such a big deal at that point of time and that too a muslim was doing this step taking this step so hence from then on we see that the establishment of the first and the last muslim woman ruler of medieval india now let us see something about razia sultan the much the much talked about queen in the history of india now razia sultan reigned from 1236 to 1240 ad she was the first female muslim leader to have ever ruled india now these are the basic information and have been said thousand times now razia was very affront and strong despite being a female leader despite facing a lot of opposition she did not act as a puppet she took her own independent decisions in every matter now razia sultan was not puppet in the hands of male leaders though many opposition parties came many tried to you know degrade her many tried to remove her from the throne but she was very bold strong and affront she even you know outrightly defied the purda system which was very prevalent and which was a mandate for the women at that point of time she was even offended by the fact that people co started addressing her as a sultana because she was completely against this gender stereotype now razia further it has to be further not father sorry Razia further offended the nobles by showing her interest towards Anne. It has to be Anne, Abyssinian na uh, slave named Jamaluddin Yakut. So she was in love with Yakut, as people say, but nothing is much clear in this aspect. But anyways, she had sort of affinity towards him. Now, when people started sensing this, you know, closeness, they began revolting against this. governors of multan badon lahore started revolting against her there was a serious turbulence and revolt in bhatinda sorry there was a serious turbulence and revolt in bhatinda altunia the then governor of bhatinda refused to accept the suzerainty of uh, razia hence in relation retaliation razia along with yakut marched against altunia now there was this person called uh, altunia he was the governor of bhatinda he was completely against the suzerainty of um, razia now in retaliation razia marched against him along with yakut now what happened is altunia and razia when you know Uh, you know uh, yakut was murdered but altunia was captured by uh, sorry yakut was murdered and razia was captured by altunia however razia was very smart she applied her brain and she married altunia in order to prevent herself or save herself from the murder otherwise altunia would have killed her too so in the meanwhile and uh, after marrying altunia they both marched towards delhi meanwhile what happened razia's brother muizuddin bahram shah took over the throne and when razia and altunia tried regaining the authority both of them were killed as a result of a conspiracy so this is a brief story which you can you know make up in your mind and you can uh, relate and this will become very easy in case you want to remember the slave dynasty or you want to learn notes about slave dynasty so if you learn anything story wise it becomes very crystal clear now there is a brief note to it after razia there was a lack of strong leader in the slave dynasty after the death of razia behram ruled for over 2 years later on he got killed by his own army he was then succeeded by his son masud shah but he too was soon deposed 
now we see coming up of very uh, you know very weak rulers after which balban came and after masud shah the youngest son of iltutmish nasiruddin mahmud ruled but was majorly assisted by balban who later on succeeded him so they were very inefficient they were very weak and hence could not remain on the throne for a longer span of time hence was succeeded by balban now balban was uh, the last great or the last strong ruler in the slave dynasty after the after him we see a decline in the uh, slave dynasty so ghiasuddin balban ruled from 1266 to 1286 ad balban was the last great ruler of the as said after him no capable ruler could lead the dynasty and ghiasuddin balban was the slave of iltutmish and iltutmish was who's who's slave iltutmish was the slave of kutubuddin aibak and kutubuddin aibak was the slave of muhammad ghori so the slave legacy you can see over here too and as soon as balban ascended the throne he executed the survivors of chalis and freed himself from the dangers of rivalry in administrative aspect he appointed spies to remain alert and cautious furthermore he did not give any authority to hindus now he was also you know only concerned towards the upliftment of the muslim muslims so he also did not give any authority to hindus in the matters of army or administration he even created a strong army to check mongols threat on delhi now they were very you know cautious of the mongolian threat so they always used to have an eye on them so that they do not see any mishap happening now he even set up a military department called diwani arz you can just learn this word he even introduced sajda and paibos because he told people that sultans are to be treated as representatives of god now this was his policy and the most famous policy blood and iron policy was introduced by none but balban he was the person behind this famous blood and iron policy which we often hear when concerning medieval history of india so this is very important point uh, whenever you make elaborate notes you can add this point too this will automatically enhance your answer now balban balban died in 1287 and was succeeded by his grandson muizuddin kikabad who was very inefficient and incapable to lead the throne now i have said i said this earlier that uh, after balban no capable or uh, efficient ruler came and hence we see the decline of the uh, slave dynasty nobody no ruler could maintain the rich legacy of the slave dynasty and they all were weak and incapable now as we are proceeding towards last of our video we we need to know a very interesting fact about balban now balban was so much disciplined he was so much disciplined that he did not even cry when his son died he did not want to show a single uh, uh, sign of sadness on his face because and you know what it, uh, people say that he did not even smile in his whole life of administrative career so such was his charismatic personality and as initially i have said after his death nobody came and hence the slave dynasty declined with the coming of khilji dynasty to power in 1290 ad which we are going to see in the further video because if had i included everything in this single video the video would have um, gone too long so i decided to do it part wise hope you liked the video stay tuned for the next upload